Okay, my daughter has just brought me to see this building because she says she can't work it out. And she thinks it may have been a church, but it's now flats. But look at the state of this brickwork. I've never seen anything like it. Has it been covered with ivy or something that's been ripped off, do you think? It's definitely, this definitely was a church. It goes pretty far under. And it's like this all over. It's like the stones rotting. That is straight. I wonder if we're, what? I've got water all over the front. So I didn't record then. So here, my daughter's just pointing out that she's, she can see that the stairs inside go completely underground in here. And it's already a fair way underground. But this this is awful. I don't know what the hell they were thinking of putting this on here. Did they put anything on here? Maybe this is, was just never done up. Maybe it was just never done up. What a mess. all the old stonework in here and then this 1881 it was what a load of rubbish don't believe that built in 1881 they just put that on there this isn't an 1881 church this is what in the it's disgusting it's like it's been blasted with some crap yuck well good morning guys from a very wet London. It's Monday, June the 10th, and it's my birthday. I'm 65 years old today. 65, made it, made it to 65. It's the UK pension age, but unfortunately due to the UK strange and sinister rules, I won't be allowed to have any money from the government until um, I'm nearly 66, so never mind hey so yes what a horrible looking church so i have found some information about it but before we go there i want to do a bit of revision and uh look at something else as well so first the first thing i wanted to look at was the victorian restoration which i did a video about and um how it was the widespread and extensive refurbishment and rebuilding of Church of England churches and cathedrals that took place in England and Wales during the 19th century reign of Queen Victoria. It was not the same process as is understood today by the term building restoration. So back then they decided that they were going to do up all the old churches because churches prior to the Victorian time according to them very poorly maintained, very seldom restored and were basically knackered. Um, it is estimated that around 80% of all Church of England churches were affected in some way by the movement, varying from minor changes to complete demolition and rebuilding. Now, rebuilding. Now I'm looking at semantics here and the word build. To f the word definition of build to form by ordering and uniting materials by gradual means into a composite whole to form by ordering and uniting materials by gradual means into a composite whole to develop according to a systematic plan by a definite process or on a particular base so if you look at semantics that's they did build they ordered and united materials by gradual means into a composite whole 
and that would include any structure that was there previously. So they're economic with the truth because they'll say they built something but they don't mention that part of the whole was um, the pre-existing structure. So this place is called the Concrete Church. <laughs> this is quite funny in places. One of the more unusual buildings in the Nord area is the former New Church in Wold Grave Road, just off Annerley Hill and a short walk from Crystal Palace Station. Now skillfully converted into a block of flats called New Church Court, the building was used for re religious worship for over a hundred years. Completed in 1883, it is of particular interest as one of the earliest buildings erected in mass concrete. From the middle of the last century, improvements in the manufacture of Portland stone allowed concrete to be exposed externally without the need for brick or stucco facing. The architect was W.E. Henley, manager of the Concrete Building Company. The building is mentioned in Cherry and Pevsner's The Building of England, London to South, where the authors remark that the workmanship appears to have been meticulous. Another description of the church suggests that the honeycomb surface of the concrete is due to the fact that it was once smothered in ivy, exclamation mark, which is exactly what I said. The walls are two feet thick and the design is elaborate with pinnacled twin turrets flanking a wide arched entrance above which is a rose window. There are mullions, deeply incised horizontal mouldings and dog tooth embellishments, all cast in the same terracotta coloured concrete. So you can see from here that the old stuff is there and it's been covered with concrete. Now I'm going to look more into the actual Crystal Palace but there's something fishy about the Crystal Palace and these big glass buildings that they were putting up back then which I'm going to look into but you can see they've replaced all these bits in here it's all been done up and it's a very very upmarket expensive place to live I mean the flats in here cost something like £1,500 a month to rent you can see the original stonework there but they're saying it's a meticulous example so I think what happened is that in the great exhibition the um, exhibitions that they held people came forward with all their new inventions and he was given this place to do up. My dog's whinging, I'm going to have to pause for a sec. My apologies for that, it's um, she wanted to go out to the loo. <laughs> I couldn't go on straight, all I could hear was her whinging. So, I've forgotten where I was now. So, um, this guy covered this church here with concrete and it said he didn't need have the need for um, bricks or anything behind but it's, it's quite obvious to me that this thing is pretty patched up if I move along to this bit here you can see here how crapped up it is close this for now. Now I want to introduce you to John Ruskin. John Ruskin was a Victorian writer who was a huge supporter of the pre-Raphaelite movement and um, naturalism and um, the relationship between people, labour and architecture and but he went to Venice and he wrote a three volume overview of Venetian architecture which is dense and extremely difficult to read but packed with information 
and the Victorians all went over to Venice to check Venice out because Venice has had a lot of restoration. And there's a, a little bit here just says that Ruskin, he wrote that his intention was to reveal the relationship between the artistic temperament of the ancient city and its moral temperature by examining the particular relationship between art and the artisan who crafted the structure. One of the unexpected consequences of Ruskin's analysis was a sudden influx of influence into contemporary British construction of the Gothic aesthetic of Venetian architecture. Because he loved the Gothic. He loved the Gothic and he um, said that Byzantine architecture represents the rise of Venetian morality while its ethical decay is fully expressed in Renaissance construction. He liked the Gothic. He, he also said there were only ever two columns, the Doric and the Corinthian. The rest is just embellishment. But I just thought I'd like to show you these as well while I'm here. Because in um, 1849, 1850, when he was in Venice, he had a camera. He was taking photographs. As you can see here. And this one, look at this, this is awesome. This reminds me of the Clapham Grand. <laughs> so, 1849, John Ruskin was um, taking photographs of Venice. And I found an essay by him called Building on the Built. And here's one of his sketches. He was quite a good artist. I like that. I like this sort of bare, sketchy artwork with just the detail shown here. I like that. He was very anti-restoration. He says that another spirit... Oh yeah, this is the bit I wanted to read. Neither by the public nor by those who have the care of public monuments is the true meaning of the word restoration understood. It means the most total destruction which a building can suffer, a destruction out of which no remnants can be gathered, a destruction accompanied with false description of the thing destroyed, false also in the manner of parody, which is what I said about Nunhead Cemetery and its obvious restoration of an old ruin. It's a parody, it's a farce the most loathsome manner of falsehood. Let us not deceive ourselves in this important matter. It is impossible, as impossible as to raise the dead to restore anything that has ever been great or beautiful in architecture. That which I have above insisted upon as the life of the whole, that spirit which is given only by the hand and eye of the workman can never be recalled. Um, I like this bit here. As for direct simple copying, it is palpably impossible what copying can there be of surfaces that have been worn half an inch down? The whole finish of the work was in the half inch that is gone. If you attempt to restore that finish, you do it conjecturally. If you copy what is left, granting fidelity to be possible, how is the new work better than the old? There was yet in the old some life, some mis mysterious suggestion of what it had been and of what it had lost, some sweetness in the gentle lines which rain and sun had wrought. There can be none in the brute hardness of the new carving. So, our concrete church. It was a Swedenborg church and up until the 1980s it was um, used and then it was sold. It was badly bombed, damaged by a bomb and as far as I'm concerned, it's just a horrible mess that just goes to show what they were doing in the Victorian Restoration. I think um, at the Crystal Palace um, exhibition, which originally was in Hyde Park, and I'm going to have a little look into this, but when they had the great exhibition in Hyde Park, it was just full of all the old stuff and all the new stuff. And I think they were showing all the old stuff and then showing all the new stuff and saying, well, we can carry on, but we can do it ourselves. And this guy came forward with, with his new concrete 
probably showed something that he'd already done and when it was first made maybe it was all nice and smooth and looked all right but I'll tell you what it it doesn't now and and I read somewhere else that they built it out of the clay out of the mud that it stood in they built made the concrete out of the mud that they dug out for the foundations well out of the mud that they dug out around it and any mud that was in it oh well, maybe they did because it looks pretty awful but here's an example of the victorian restoration so they had that and they did that yeah they had that and they did that which is pretty much what i think what they do with all of them they have something that's a bit of a shell with a few features and then they just do whatever they think they want to do and they were into gothic so they gothic it up a bit with towers and pinnacles and in this case of our concrete church concrete and that was one example of taking modern modernity too far i think horrible looking thing anyway i'm going to wind it up there um i will be going back to the crystal palace because there's something going on there it was in hyde park for like nine months massive great big thing full up of all this wonderful stuff and all the old technasma and statues and and then they moved it to the crystal palace where it was placed there for a about 80 years in um, landscape gardens and but the idea of moving that massive great big greenhouse across London from Hyde Park to the Crystal Palace re-putting it up and landscaping the gardens in the space of oh, I don't know a couple of years with everything else going on it's just another one of those weird things to me so I'm going to be looking at that next anyway Hope you enjoyed my look at this horrible concrete church and um, see you soon.